welcome to uh, Psychic Nerds. It's uh, June 10th, 2022 at almost 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, surrounded by all my friends here. We have Human Avatar, I'm a U of M fan, Tarzan, Lost Shaker, Purple Roads. We have uh, Han the Gibson Slayer down there, Liz, Tech Cowgirl, Girl, Dee Dee, Samantha Jane James, and then the Ghost Santino down there in the bottom right hand corner. Um, interesting week. Uh, I, I want to talk about some connection issues. So uh, yesterday, Sam and I tried to do a, a crypto review. My internet was horrible. Um, I signed up for some uh, fiber that I used to have at my other place, said the order went through, and then I was contacted this morning that it will not go through, that they are not, they don't have my neighborhood built out here. So a little bit more out in the country, so close to the country that I'm about 100 yards in my backyard is a big pond, and I saw six uh, adult geese and about two, four, six, eight baby geese uh, walking past, uh, coming from the pond, walking across uh, the lawn, going to another pond uh, across the street. So I thought that was kind of cool this morning as I'm sitting on the porch. Um, so uh, I probably should have said this before I hit record, but if I lose connection, um, I bumped up my internet. My router can't really handle it yet. They're sending me a new router. So we'll just see how it goes. So hopefully we make it through. And uh, sorry about yesterday, Sam. That was a bad connection. I hope I didn't uh, butcher our recording. But... Well, the, uh, the edited version is done now. And Good. Spencer was not complaining. So I think oh, that cool. the replay was OK. Good. This is good to hear. Good, good to hear. Uh, a couple things. Uh, so yesterday, or I'm sorry, last week, we started off the show with something different than we normally talk about, because uh, if you're not a Psychic Nerds member, you don't have access to the Patreon and Discord. You only get like a 30-minute sampler up on YouTube. So just tried to show a little bit uh, of some of the other things we talk about as well. Um, and then we focused on energy and commodities uh, last week. Um, I don't know really where we want to start. The new CPI numbers are out, I think, uh, higher than expected in May 8.6, I believe. And it's kind of crushing legacy markets. And uh, as we were talking about right before the recording, it looks like crypto is getting punched in the nose as well. It looks like uh, ETH is at uh, 16 something, um, 1674, and Bitcoin's at uh, 29. So why don't we do that to start off this week? Why don't we just talk about the general... Uh, State of the macro environment, uh, legacy markets getting drained, high CPI numbers, huge gasoline increases uh, throughout the United States. And I know everyone listening to this is not a United States person, but it's really the only thing I can talk about uh, with some authority since I'm in the United States. So, um, but I feel confident when we say it that way, I feel confident in talking about. Um, so let's go ahead and... Mm -hmm. Would you say that? Uh, I mean, do you do you believe that the C, that the, the the announced CPI numbers are actually unexpected? For me, they're not unexpected, uh, but the markets reacted like they were unexpected. I think a lot of analysts, it seemed, were hanging on the hopes um, that that eventually this would start to cool, things would cool off. Uh, they continue with maybe a half point right in June, maybe another half point in July and then back right off. So um, still think that may be the case, but they were hotter than they expected. Right. So um, when I say they, I don't know if it's us. Um, I was hoping uh, it would cool off. But um, yeah. And we all know how the real CPI, right, the real numbers are calculated in 8.6 actually looks pretty uh, light compared to what people are dealing with. Um, saw that, you know, groceries were above 10 percent um looked like hard liquor was down so I'm, that's not a recommendation but i'm just saying i think samantha jane james mentioned that uh, a couple times that uh, the alcohol industry might do okay uh during this period of time like it always does sam right uh yeah which is kind of interesting um so yeah what, like a big ahead. macro question i had is 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 what would it take for uh, cryptos to to change um, change dynamic from being a, another tech stock or a, a, a beta tech stock in, into this this safe haven that we all hope. You know what what would have to happen for that to that to occur. That's a sort of topic I'm wondering about. Yeah, um, and we've kind of kicked that topic around before, right? 
um, I think some people here have some ideas about that. Maybe it's uh, things get so sketchy for fiat and you know uh, nationalized currencies that these things are looked at as a means of uh, you know determining value uh, between people. Um, that maybe it's maybe it's true fiat dis destruction and in, in uh, the implosion of uh, a lot of countries around the world where maybe they turn to this as a means for exchange, right? I would it's imply it's a long way off. Yeah. Well, not enough fear yet. Not enough fear yet. Yeah, that would match up with um, the gold and silver and cryptos, like gold, silver, cryptos. That's what I kept getting because people are pouring into the precious metals, the physical precious metals, and it's because of the fear and what's going on. And as you watch the outer reaches of the economies, so with the United States being the center and then Canada, Mexico, you know, around, and then you've got some of the more sort of successful countries who can manufacture, they, and the big winners will be the ones who have enough um, false, either fossil fuels with a combination of whether it's, you know, solar, wind, natural gas, like whatever it is that they have, they have enough where they don't have to import it. If you have enough wheat, if you have enough food to feed your own society, if you have enough electricity, those will be the societies that will be more survivable. Like I would not want to live in any of these countries where they don't manufacture anything. Like look at what happened to Venezuela because all that Venezuela did was produce oil. Like that was all that it did. It didn't manufacture anything else. And it was like this heavy crude order oil. It didn't have any refineries. Um, so when the, when it went on the side of Russia and Cuba, et cetera, then Venezuela fell under sanctions and had some problems, you know, but we're looking at the world changing in a way that we've never seen before. And I had expected inflation to continue on because that is what needs to happen because of the entitlements that the Western societies have chained themselves to. And they also chained the taxpayer to it. And what happens is that you can't enslave the younger generation to pay for your entitlements because they're just going to say, screw you, and they're going to leave. I mean, that's what I would do. I would say I, I would leave. I'm like, I'm not paying your $8,000 a month pension. Well, I barely have enough to live off of. I, and so governments realize this. We cannot pay these entitlements. They can't afford it. So they are inflating the money. That's, that is what will save it in the end. And the people that it's going to end up hurting are the people who don't have any hard assets and who just 100% counted on receiving payments from either like from the government for the most part or anything that where the taxpayer has guaranteed it. For example, someone like myself who was self-employed when I, when my, um, fund that I gave to a financial advisor when he drove it down into the dirt and made it worth like a quarter of what it was worth seven years after I gave it to him. You know, the government didn't swoop in and bail me out. They didn't be, they weren't, oh, here, here, Samantha Jane, right. you know, you, you can, you can get money from my, well, whatever the difference was, you know, if you were trying to save, so you could get $5,000 a month and now you're only going to get 1200, we're, we're going to subsidize you that 3,800 a month, Samantha Jane, don't you worry. But basically that's what was going on with all these entitlements. And, and, and it wasn't just a small group of people. It's like pretty much all of your uh, frontline people, you know, your first responders, you know, so they just pay into these pensions and they're going to get to the end. And some people are collecting their pensions now and they're looking at inflation and they're like, you know, I get five or $6,000 a month, for example. And they're like, I can pay my bills now, but if this keeps going this way, I'm going to have to go back to work. Right. This yeah. is the way that it's headed. And our sure. nurses, our teachers, they all have, they, they weren't rich enough to go and get like a rental on the side or something like that. Right? right. They just had a piece of their paycheck taken every two weeks and they counted on and depended on the, not only the financial people to make a return um, of which, oh, by the way, my husband does have one of those pensions and it made 1% last year, right. 1%. So, I mean, I don't know what people thought they were going to be living off of, but I think that a lot of people are really afraid right now. Um, and 
as we see sort of the outer reaches of the economy start to burn down in the world and it starts to come for us, you know, that's when you're going to see gold, silver, cryptos going up, um, interest rates. Well, I mean, it's just none of it's going to make sense to anybody. They're going to be like, well, this doesn't make sense because normally gold moves inverse to interest rates. But I was seeing all of it was moving up at the same time. And now I'm watching it and it's just, you know, to uh, be alive during these times. Well, it certainly is interesting, isn't it? It is. And I, I guess we signed up for this, right? The rapids. <laughs> yeah, we're in the rapids. Um, the, uh, go ahead. I was going to say the fossil fuel issue we talk about with, with countries that have fossil fuels, even that's being complicated by this ESG agenda at the moment, environment, social and governance. And it's there's no practical from what I'm hearing, there's no no um, exploration going on. New wells aren't being dug. Um, it's because it's it's you know this ESG agenda, which is is not helping fuel prices. Anyway, carry on. Sorry. Well, this is interesting because I mean I've I've showed quite a few articles and read quite a few articles right over these last months where it does look like some of these governments um, are going to use as predicted as we talked about now for multiple months, but these food, energy, uh, commodity issues um, they'd be they'd be considered national defense issues. So we've seen you know nuclear energy be talked about right. We talked we've seen new funding. Uh, starting up around, you know, getting uh, some of these production facilities back, right? So I know there's a huge ESG uh, agenda out there. And I read that a lot on like, um, what I would consider kind of, <clears throat> seems the majority of that is out of the mainstream, more on like conspiracy sites, right? But uh, in the mainstream, it looks like governments are starting to flip the switch. They understand how, how important food energy is, right? Food energy. And I think they're going to print like crazy uh, to support those, especially when they become threatened, when either one of those becomes threatened. Um, and I actually think we're going to see amazing, wonderful technologies be born out of that, um, more efficiency, um, all sorts of things, but which we've talked about now for months, right? Um, so I guess let's talk about that. Let's talk about ESG, you know, this, this idea of these ridiculous standards that, that, that don't really marry very well with the world yet the, the, the real world, yet the state uh, that we've been in and we're continuing to move through. Um, I've shown a couple of interviews where a couple of these smart individuals <clears throat> yet have pontificated that uh, basically this is what brings us amazing, um, you know, high efficiency, uh, technologies is that the marrying of both these that we've never really had these um, the need for food production need for energy uh, need for commodities and then also trying to do it in a new new way but I'll I'll be quiet but uh, what are you guys thoughts how did what does that look like these these two opposing seemingly opposing worlds smashing into each other but uh, the way I'm kind of wrapping my mind around it's kind of marrying it together you know any thoughts interesting yeah because because you need friction to create new new things new technologies don't you so this this is the friction that, that in necessity the past, in the past yeah. it's been wars and in this case it, it's a economic issue yeah yeah necessity is the mother of invention right um and we all know that there's a lots of amazing technologies out there that can help to solve some of these problems right absolutely well you had the the cancer announcement that was pretty cool. It was pretty amazing. That was, yeah, that's that's if that's real and it gets out, that's big time. Yeah. Cat agrees. <laughs> smart, smart kitty. Don't encourage her. <laughs> kitty, 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 kitty. I know there's a lot of people that watch. <laughs> There's a lot of people that watch uh, Sam or is on Sam's Discord uh, or Patreon or the Psychic Nerds uh, Discord or Patreon. Uh, a lot of Cliff High fans, right? And this is how not, Cliff has always kind of talked about these things, uh, that rare earth minerals would be important, commodities would be important, uh, and it would really be out of necessity uh, that these things and these new technologies are, are springboarded forward and brought uh, to bear into the market. Um, any thoughts about that? Have we seen any of that um, melting, you know, the frequency device stuff coming out, you know, about, you know, melting the, the commodities out of the ground without really having to drill or did you see something? 
No, not right. really. Um, no, nothing in the news. But I, I think, you know, I think that's on the back end of, of what comes next, right? That's that's out a ways. Um, um, but yeah, let's let's just go back over. Uh, let's go back over and take a look at these legacy markets. They're they're getting trounced today, right? So dollars up, gold's up, uh, silver's up. Uh, crypto's, crypto's down. Um, a lot of equities down. So down 800 points here in the Dow. Uh, Nasdaq's down uh, 400. If we switch over to gold, uh, we can see that gold's up 23 bucks. Silver's up uh, 13 cents. Uh, copper, platinum, palladium. Uh, all kind of hanging out. Um, you know, the so junior mining index is um, is really caught a bid today. It's it's diverging. It's the it's diverging from everything else. So this is really what like what I was saying earlier is the signal that that um, you know precious metals investors have been looking for, and then people in the mining sector have been looking for, because silver and gold tend to be late stage commodity runners in inflationary cycles. Mm -hmm. So this morning shit re got real in the legacy markets on inflation for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. Uh, and this is a sign that they're, they got religion on this. Now they are, they're, you know, big money is very quickly now talking about how they're going to pivot and how they're going to change their models. Uh, so you're seeing the hedge funds move into uh, the metals this morning in a pretty significant way. So now, like I said, you know, you need more than one day to make a trend, but we have not seen this where you've got US dollar up significantly. Like it's up, you know, it's jumped almost an entire point today uh, based on high inflation numbers and, and yields going up. Uh, yields went up uh, very rapidly today. Yep. So. You know, uh, I know Sam was saying this uh, you really early on. I've been seeing it for a while as well. In fact, I positioned my portfolio for this, exactly this. Uh, I've been moving out of crypto into the precious metals area now for a number of months. Uh, and I'm very tilted towards precious metals exactly for this reason, because I think crypto still needs to prove itself uh, as being able to act as an inflation hedge you know, and a non-correlating asset to the rest of the markets. So far, it has failed to do that. And it's showing no signs really of doing that. So, so we're, although I believe that will probably happen, uh, it's just, it, it, it ain't happening yet. So I think you're going to see th this area run first. And, you know, not only if you were in this area, not only did you, are you not getting cream today, you're actually making money. And yeah. so, we're going into a period where preserving capital is going to be key because if you don't have any capital left to take advantage of a turnaround in crypto, then you're done, right? I mean, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's kind of how it works. This is, this is unfortunately one of the side effects of blindly hodling and never taking profits is that you may get that turnaround, but you'll have, you know, 10 cents to your name by the time that happens. So, It'll be, it'll be new money that comes into the bull market of crypto. Um, but it, 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 down the road, the tech, the tech side of it, I think is way down the road. Um, I think we have a big bust first before that comes. And the crypto that begins to act like a commodity, begins to act like the metals are going to act, those will do very, very well. Um, so it's, it's, it's nuanced. It's very nuanced. But uh, today's a bad day on the markets, and it's probably going to get worse. And if crypto is acting like a NASDAQ stock, yeah, we're probably, you know, going to new lows before we move higher in any way. Yeah. Let's, uh, you, you showed uh, in the green room before we got started, you showed me, uh, showed us how to go through and get to and take a look at some of those uh, miners and things that we were looking at uh, last week. And I just thought this would be helpful for people because I couldn't, I didn't know how to navigate. So you can go to kitco.com. Uh, then you can click on Kitco Silver. I think this is where it was. And if we scroll down here, uh, we'll see some silver exchange rates and fiat currencies here. But if there's top five performing silver equities, right? And then you can click more silver stocks here. And this is kind of like the list 
And I wish I could get this dumb box out of the way. Let's just put it here. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show that to people so they could go click on that and look at these themselves or, or, or uh, yeah, just be able to get there. Um, any, any thoughts on these, you guys? Uh, these are responding pretty well, right? These are larger cap ones. Um, sorry, can you hear me okay, Mo? Yep, I can hear you perfect. D did you hear the last part of stuff, what I was saying, or was, was I clicking out? Um, you might have cut out. Go ahead. Okay. Just, uh, let, me let, me just, let me just say uh, this is, um, um, so these guys are mm -hmm. like the, the, the bigger cap silver miners. And they, um, and even these guys, which are the larger cap, uh, some of them are moving like 8%, you know, 6% today on a day when most of the markets are down huge. Yeah. Uh, the smaller cap, um, you know, some like things that I hold like <clears throat> Banyan, you know, or, you know, Endeavor or, you know, Metallic, or there's a whole bunch of them. Aftermath Silver is up 14%. I mean, some of the platinum stocks are up. Um, you know, these guys are going to start to move. The fact that they're catching this kind of money tells you that we may be at the beginning of a shift um, just in the general markets, that sure. money's starting to get scared, right? Starting to worry. Can we take a look at some of those, just if you if you can think of them offhand? Um, well, why don't you just look at SILJ and that that's junior miners. Oh, okay. Overall. All right. That's the index, yeah. That's yeah, one of the, the indexes. indexes. Yeah. Which is up, I think, four five percent today. Yeah, pretty good. And it's doing this while the USD is having such a strong move. This is extremely positive. This is telling you that this is now scared money coming in, right? Because mm -hmm. what's moving? US dollar, gold, silver. Just like Sam was saying earlier, yep. that's scared money moving in. What we hope for crypto investors, because I know most people are not invested in this sector. Um, they want to know what's going on with crypto. Crypto needs to jump that. It needs to join that club, specifically Bitcoin. Bitcoin needs to join that club. Um, when it does it, who knows? Uh, I, I mean, you know, I have no idea. It, it, may, it may lurch a lot lower first before it does that. So, uh, but these guys are ready. They're primed and they're already taking off. Yeah. You know, in, in, a, in a lot of us have never really looked at silver or gold or silver miners or gold miners. But if you if you look at a chart back in like 2016 in, in August, there was like a little pop in silver. I mean, it maybe went from 13 to 20 something, but silver stocks like First Majestic or so, you know, the silver miners, they went up like three, four hundred percent in that move. Yeah. So the miners always react, you know, exponentially to the to the price of silver. Okay. I think I we'll use see. those I, I use those profits to buy Bitcoin in those days. The profits I got from those miners, uh, that pop that um, IFM fan is talking about. Right. Sorry, Sam, of, go ahead. A lot yeah. of people think that in 2011 was like, you know, these these silver stocks moved tremendously, but there was also a big move in 2016. And, and I think we're going to see that again. Yeah, I think as the money, the scared money flows into the US dollar. And then of course, hedge funds are now looking at, okay, what are the, what are the asset plays that we can get in on here? And they know there's scarcity in the rare earth metals. Um, but again, there are some things that some people aren't thinking about, which is, you know, this, this uh, upheaval that's going to be happening all over the world is going to affect mining company. So for those people um, who didn't review last week's uh, Psychic Nerds, um, just to mention that again, to please be mindful of where you are uh, buying into mines, because you don't want to, for example, buy into a mine that, I mean, I don't know, if, I don't think Sri Lanka has any mines, but it's currently a country that's melting down. So can you imagine if you had a business there of any kind, let alone a mine, that you had to fly engineers in or fly people in or even just getting from the airport to your hotel is dangerous. So those countries for any type of businesses, mines, et cetera, you want to make sure that you're not in. And I do feel like Bitcoin will start to move as 
people are trying to escape many of these countries or they maybe they can't escape but they they're seeing the meltdown of the fiat currencies in other countries and they they know they're next right so what are they going to do with their money well some of them will be able to buy gold and silver but you know that the hard asset of gold and silver that disappeared a little while ago right because that you don't you don't own it if you don't hold it mantra that started just a couple of years ago and that's when we started even in the western communities here to see a shortage of silver and in order to buy silver now i mean silver might be listed at what 21 23 set 23 dollars but you're really paying like 38 39 because of the fee that you have to pay look there 36 dollars and nine cents for an ounce of silver when it's listed as what twenty one dollars is what the actual ounce is costing. Yeah, so the the raw here on on the charts, right? And this is just the silver the CFD, but it's twenty twenty one dollars and eighty some cents, right? Eighty eight cents. Right. And we've been showing uh, quite a bit, you know, how much these premiums have really, man, they're just they're through the roof. And that thirty six, that's for a check and wire of fifteen hundred. Uh, or more coins, right? If you go down to just, you know, one to 20 coins, you could be paying, you know, if you were paying with PayPal, you're almost in the $40 range right now, right? There you go. Yeah, but that's the, 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 uh, the Silver Eagle has the largest, you know, uh, mo- or, or what do you call that? Um, premium. 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 It has the largest premium. That's not the premium you would buy on a lot of other silver. So, so let's there- just... Let's go ahead and go through this. Uh, and one of the people that Americans like to buy these things, these Liberty rounds, right? These, these American silver eagles is they, they come from the treasury. All coinage comes from the treasury and it's outside the Federal Reserve, right? So a lot of us feel much more comfortable with something like this as opposed to a generic round. But let's go, let's go check out some generic rounds. Yeah, because they also guarantee it. And that's the other thing too. You have to remember if you're, if you're some peasant in the middle of nowhere Turkey buying a piece of silver, because you're watching your family's assets that you've worked your entire life for melt down. And fraud is a huge problem in these countries because people are not educated. People don't have access to the equipment that, for example, would you know very simply show whether or not silver was real or not real. But I, I do feel like people do, they do trust the American Eagles more so. And also the Canadian um maple maple leaves that's the other one and again because again they look at it they see us they see canada so anything that is clearly marked with these countries that these people in the middle of nowhere um you know indo europe you know end up buying this metal i doubt seriously they would be able to buy it at even those prices it's probably it's probably double the price of the ounce of silver, if not triple, for them to get a hold of an actual silver eagle in, say, like Turkey. Yeah, yeah, which makes them even more valuable because they know that people will pay whatever for the security of being able to get a hold of it. But then you're also going to see, okay, they can't get silver or gold. Well, what else are they going to get if they can, and you can't get U.S. dollars? You can get Bitcoin, though. Absolutely, one hundred percent. These are, these are just very interesting to me, uh, and I like uh, we've been talking about this a lot, right, over the last months. Sometimes I feel like I'm just recapping the things, same things we've been talking about for six months, but maybe we get new people all the time, or maybe it needs to be stated again, or, or maybe, you know, we can input different ideas around it or whatever, but things are just kind of unfolding, um, and I, I think this information is more important now than it even was when we were talking about the future, right, but these ideas, you know, in the last six months, we've seen just like Sam was saying, in, in some of these countries, you know, we're seeing mines being nationalized. They're just nationalized. The, the governments are just stepping in and just taking those mines away. We, we believe that, you know, if you're in North America, that's the best place to be, probably in the world. Canada, United States, Mexico, um, you know, probably very safe um, getting into these things that we're talking about. Uh, and I would stick to those. If, if I was Canadian, I'd be sticking right to my Canadian miners and commodities and energy, right? or United States, right? Um, Mexico, everybody knows this, but Mexico sits on some of the largest, you know, natural reserves of silver, silver veins in the world. Um, Actually, if things were priced in silver, they'd be one of the richest countries. So um, anyway. um, I think you made a good point about nationalization. 
Yeah, it's because scary. Because I, I told a client of mine the other day, I said, if you're going to buy these metal stocks, make sure you're in North America. Because what's going to happen is as fiats become unstable, these countries will start nationalizing their resources. And if you have stock in Africa, some African miner, it could get nationalized and you're going to be left holding the bag, basically. Right. So you want to stay over here in North America when you're buying these things. I trade almost exclusively now on the Toronto Stock Exchange, um, all Canadian listed miners. Um, there's enough to choose from there, really quality, some of the biggest mining stocks in the world. If you're in Australia, you also have a big selection as well. Australia has great mining companies there, all different kinds of metals from uranium, they're just like Canada, from uranium to the metals to the PGMs, the platinums. Uh, you can go anywhere uh, on those two exchanges. So there's no need to get exotic with metals. Uh, the only the only places if you're going to invest in platinum, South Africa is really almost the only country left. So there's some in North America, but they're not very prolific. So um, you know, I think if you stick, in, in fact, I think you're going to see for this reason a Toronto Stock Exchange just as an index. Let's say somebody was really lazy. And they're like, I invest now. Like, I can't do all this. Just invest in a TSE, Toronto Stock Exchange Index. It will outperform pretty much anything in the coming years. Um, it's going to, Canada's going to be a great place to be. And people are going to start moving into their uh, stock exchange exactly for energy, agriculture, uh, and metals. So if you just did just a straight index of the TSE, you're probably going to make out really, really well in what's coming. I mean, most of this, most of us are going to convert these back to dollars anyway, right? We're, we're not, we're not cashing out for the metal. We're trying to preserve our wealth by, by, um, by, by buying, by buying something that's going to grow in terms of dollars. You know, like I have a...